going on? This is Holland with Karma Loop TV, and I'm chilling here with Slug, one half of Atmosphere. This is your sixth studio album, is that right? Yes. Uh, yeah, this is the sixth, you know, I guess. It's a, We call it our sixth album because it's like the sixth one that we took serious. Okay. You know what I mean? Okay. A lot of the side projects that me and Anthony do are just a lot more novelty-based or fun-based, whereas, you know, this is the one where we're kind of like, hey, we think this one's pretty good. Let's hire a publicist for this one. Let's, uh, let's, let's make sure it goes through distro, you know? So it's like, we call it... I, I guess I wouldn't call it the sixth studio album. I'll call it like the sixth m machined album. This is the sixth album we've actually, you know, spit through the machine. You had uh, a thousand people line up in Minneapolis for the release. Is that right? Man, I didn't count them, but it was a lot. You know, they kept. You know, we started it at midnight, and uh -huh. we were out there till about 4:30 in the morning. Signing autographs. Signing autographs. Selling those records. Shaking babies and kissing <laughs> hands and shit. All right, so um, so on this album, I noticed you 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 kind of came from a different place on this. You know, a lot of your older albums, you were in more of like a uh, you know, conflicted place. A lot of the stories were about you, and this one seems to be like you're you kind of coming from a place of resolution and talking about other people in life. You know, that's I mean, that's definitely true. I'm I'm, I'm trying to give more narratives than, than than things that sound autobiographical. You know, but what's funny is kind of I think this is probably the most personal record we've ever made because I think a lot of people took those older songs and was like, oh, this is his life, where it's like, nah, those were narratives too. Like, you know, I'm not that big of an idiot. Like, I wasn't all wilding out like that, but those were songs, you know, that I took those discrepancies of life and used them as, you know, metaphors or ways to narrate points. And, and yeah, of course, they came directly out of my life in the sense of like, this is what I felt, or this is how I see these situations. But this particular record, I feel like I'm actually dropping more of, of of my vision and my you know my opinions on things than I was even in the earlier stuff when I was talking more so about myself and my issues and my problems. Yeah, and I mean, I think the biggest thing you touched on right there is that I noticed from the old works is like a lot of times you could you could vent out your frustrations with life or you know any problems that are having even if you described them in the sense of another person's life not necessarily your own or if you were telling a personal story it's different from on this new album where you do you offer that resolution and you offer you offer you know where you've come to and you're kind of it seems like you're speaking from a different place i mean i i'm older I'm, i grew yeah. i had things happen in my life that were you know good bad whatever but i you know hopefully i've gained some insight and wisdom in these years and so hopefully that's being conveyed now did did aunt lay down a, a different you know a different tone of beats for you because i noticed he's progressed since, since shadows of the sun since any of your albums you know for this record definitely we actually intended on making this a very jimmy jam and terry lewis record in, in a sense we we were listening to a lot of time a lot of alexander o'neill a lot of the things that they were producing and listening to what you know listening to what these dudes were making and how these were like cold but they were funk it was still funk that brought people together, but the sounds were cold, and it, it kind of reminded me of like, what the fuck me and Amp been doing? Like, a lot of our music, to me, sounded like a colder version of my favorite rappers. Not that I was as good as them, but it was like our trying to be as dope as Gangstar, and it's like, it sounds like Minnesota, though, you know? And I saw that in old Jimmy Jam and Terry Lewis stuff, and so we just were like, yo, we're gonna make a record full of synth and full of... And mind you, this is before Kanye dropped his record. I hadn't heard it yet. When he did make it, I was really relieved to see that he did the synth thing and he did the 80s thing, but he did it differently. His shit was so musical and so big. It was it was still like good in cars, headphones, or clubs. Whereas like, we don't know how to make shit that sounds good in clubs, man. But, you know, we do what we do. And so our shit stayed cold. And I'm glad that it was so different from what Kanye did that can't nobody say we were like swagger jacking, you know, but, but, you know, it's atmosphere, so naturally a couple of piano songs made it into the mix, you know, that's kind of our traditional kind of look, you know what I mean? A couple of guitar joints, and then we even stripped that one joint all the way down to guitar, you know, just to kind of get our Thug Mansion on, you know what I mean? But like, I don't know, man, I, I'll definitely say that, that it's different from all of our other records because when we first started doing it, we knew what sound we wanted to do, and I don't think we've ever really done that before. 